There's no separation in church and state. They're not supposed to be separated. <laughs> was actually a better choice than Moses for this job. He was the leader of the Jews at the time, who I think by no coincidence was Moses' brother. But Moses had a brother who was already the leader of, the, of Israel. He was the head rabbi of the whole country, whole uh, nation. We didn't have a country yet. And uh, he was leading. He would have been the right guy, except, except he wouldn't have been able to handle the prophetic experience that Moses was able to handle. And so. Even though his brother was the obvious choice as far as leaders go, um, he couldn't have gotten the Torah. Now, an interesting question, though, and it kind of brings up church and state, is, um, is why, why is, why didn't God choose a priest to handle religion and Aaron to handle state? Aaron's a better leader. Let him lead. And let Moses get the Torah. The answer is, is that the person who brings down the civil law has to be the person who gets the Torah. You understand? They're together. There's no separation in church and state. It's, they're not supposed to be separated. Now, I have no idea what, how bad world religions would be for state, but probably pretty bad if we've seen most democracies want them separated. But Judaism, God forbid, you never separate church and state. They're, they are one. They're bonded eternally. And if you're wondering why, anyone wondering why they're bonded eternally, is that interesting to anybody? The reason they're bonded eternally is because, is because, the, <laughs> because the only reason you could have a moral voice would be because there's a God. Well, what is state? State is how do you organize a population of people and keep them from killing each other? The answer is you have to create civil law. Well, civil law then is going to be what's called good, and breaking that civil law is what's called bad. Well, where does good and evil come from? Where does good and bad come from? The answer is, well, if there's no God, there is no such thing as good and evil. And I can understand why they would want a separation from the religions. You know, keep the religions out of it. Let's just create law. And we'll ignore the fact that the only reason you know good and evil is because of God. Because there's a God, and therefore there's got to be something good, and there's got to be something evil. But, you know, like, if you don't believe in that, so then you, in the end, your society's going eat it, to eat itself alive. And then so you have to create civil law. You just keep religion away from it. But Judaism understands that the only reason we have the concept of good and evil is only because there's God. That's the only reason we have good and evil. Where else would you get it? It can only come from a God that you have good and evil. Again, the atheists, you know, Sam Harris would say, you know, something like, like in, in, after billions of years of, of people doing things that were against the betterment of society, after billions of years, I don't know how many years is that, hundreds of thousands or a million years or millions of years, of human beings doing things that weren't for the betterment, they got, they got somehow, uh, uh, what is it called? It selected out. It, was, it selected itself. And we're just genetically selected to do things that are positive for society. Just like totally cuckoo. That's a, oh, do they use the word cuckoo in the rest of the world? In Israel, cuckoo means crazy. <laughs> All sorts of ponytail. Israel's big on the word cuckoo. So, you know, but that's, that's just totally cuckoo. Like, I mean, that's just the, the, the opposite discussion is, is that only with God is there good and evil. That's it. If you have a God, so then yeah, there's, we've been created. We've been created. There must be a purpose. Well, I know I have a moral voice inside my heart. And so it must be that I'm supposed to have this tug of war between good and evil inside of me and, and choose good. 
And that, that, that's the way we were created. We were created for that. It's not that this is some kind of Darwinian selection that was made over the years, <laughs> that our predicament of free will is, is somehow we were, we selected, we, we're like the survival of the fittest was the ones who think doing good, we're the ones who lasted. Because it's very interesting, because it's the exact opposite of what would select. What would actually select would be the might makes right would do the selection. Just it would look at the animal kingdom. It's not the, the one that does the most good wins. It's the one that's usually the most vicious would do the winning. And Hitler was a social Darwinist, and he believed the Jews, because of all the mitzvahs in the Torah, he was quite an expert in it, as far as you know, someone who never went to yeshiva would be called an expert, but he understood that a lot of Judaism is about benevolence and being good and, and sacrificing yourself for the, for the whole and to recognize that every single human being has a soul and every single human being who has that soul, therefore, is part of God and part of a plan. Whereas he would say that, that not killing the weak would be... Would be uh, a disadvantage for what, as a social Darwinist would believe, is to create a master race. And, and so Judaism says, no, you should be anti-Darwinian and sacrifice yourself, and sacrifice your family. That people are taken care of in the world. And, uh, and to the betterment of society. Now, maybe Harris would say, yeah, I mean, it's not going to make any sense, but such anti-Darwinian thinking of taking care of others besides your own is, has over millions of years has somehow kept 